Good morning and welcome to another edition of Money Talk with Melanie. This is your business diva and host, Melanie Collette, and we are coming to you live via the Exceptional Conservative Network and SHR Media. We are happy to be with you this good Friday morning. It's a beautiful day here in Cape May County, New Jersey. And this morning we are happy to have joining us Anne-Marie Mural. I, I, I believe I'm pronouncing her name right. I have to double check with her when I when I talk to her again. Uh, she's the owner and CEO of and also editor in chief of Politichecks.com. And this is the second week of a three part series of Politichecks that we have with us here on Money Talk with Melanie. Last week we had the lovely, uh, brilliant, and talented uh, uh, um, Morgan Brittany. And then next week, we will have Sonia Sasser. So we're very pleased to have uh, Anne-Marie with us this morning. Before we get to that, we do have a bit of housekeeping and some news to get to. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, you may do so at Money Talk Mel. Or you can like my Facebook page at Money Talk with Melanie. If you do so, you will be able to find out who the uh, who our upcoming guests are. Uh, you also will be able to get the podcast right after the shows are uh, broadcast. So, for example, right after the show is done today, I post the podcast. So if you miss the show, if you see the show is promoted and you see it on my Facebook page or on Twitter, and you, you're like, oh man, I missed that show, you can always come to my Facebook page and click on a podcast and listen to it. Also, if you would like to email me, give me show ideas, you have questions, something like that, tell me I have an ugly sweater on, <laughs> whatever, you can do so at moneytalkwithmelanie at gmail.com. Finally, if you would like to be one of our guests on the show, we've been privileged to have a fantastic list of guests on the show, such as Anne Marie. Uh, Brittany Morgan. We we had Ebony Williams on on Monday. We've had Dr. Brooks Brooks Robinson from BlackEconomics.org, Colonel Rob Manus, uh, Sen Senator Albert Guillory, Senator Ted Harvey. Just lots of fantastic guests we've been privileged to have on the show. If you would like to join that list, please do send us your information by going to the ExceptionalConservativeShow.com clicking on contact us and send us your information and we will see about having you on the show. You can also do so by giving us a call at 202-660-1329 extension 2 is my extension at the Exceptional Conservative Network. So what is going on in the news? Well Yesterday, uh, our Secretary of State Rex Tillerson uh, and uh, President Vladimir Putin of Russia had had a little a little meeting. And as I, I told you on on Wednesday, in anticipation of this meeting, there were a few reasons if you hadn't heard that this meeting was going to be just a, a smidge on, on the frosty side. Uh, uh, <laughs> A number of reasons. Uh, no, number one, uh, you know, Russia's good friend Syria used chemical weapons, uh, namely searing gas, and killed 80 of his own people and injured a number of people, upwards of 300 people, including, you know, women, children, babies, just, you know, indiscriminately killed its own people. In response to that, President Trump sent missiles over to destroy um, or at least heavily damage the um, the air air hangers from from which the um, the weapons were dispensed over in Syria. Now, at the same time, you know Russia's claiming that they had no idea that that was going to happen. They're also covering up for Syria, saying that uh, you know that Syria was framed. They never did that. They don't have any any uh, chemical weapons. President Trump and the United States position is that they have it on good authority and good intelligence that that is not the case. So, needless to say, 
when uh, Secretary Tillerson met with um, his counterpart as well as President Putin over in Russia yesterday. It was it was a, a smidge on the frosty side. I think Siberia is, is probably a little warmer than the, <laughs> than the meeting between uh, the, those two counterparts yesterday. And it, I don't it, I don't know if anyone caught the um, the joint press conference between the two. I, I caught it on uh, on satellite. I was on the way. I was on my way back from DC, and uh, I, I there was practically frost coming through my radio <laughs> in the car. I mean, it was a pretty chilly um, exchange. So, and, and I, I think uh, Tillerson kind of bared that out when he said that uh, our relationship with Russia is at, at a low point, and I think that's prob probably an understatement. Now, the press wants to kind of you know, blame that on President Trump, which is ironic in light of the fact that uh, during the election cycle, they said that, you know, he was all friendly with, with Russia. Like, pick a side. You know, mainstream media, pick a side, please. So, we need to keep a close eye, eye on that. Hopefully, maybe we can be friends. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. You know, and, and Tillerson's bottom line, at the end of the press conference was like, look, Russia, you guys need to stop back in Syria and, and, and get on board with like the rest of civilized, the civilized world. And uh, Russia was like, uh, no. So, which is unfortunate. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate, uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Now, another thing that, that happened, and I didn't hear too much about this on the news yesterday, which is kind of kind of strange. In North Carolina, the uh, lawmakers introduced a bill to ga ban gay marriage again. Now, this is after, you know, the bathroom bill was just repealed a couple weeks ago in North Carolina. That's the bill that said that transgender people had to use the um, bathroom that matched the sex on their birth certificate. So, you know, they, I think, I believe our Republican governor lost the election, and now I have a Democrat in there, and uh, they revert, they repealed that law. So, uh, but now, <laughs> so now they moved to, to ban gay marriage. Wow, wow. <laughs> by the way, um, by the by, for anyone who doesn't know, which I can't imagine who who it is, um, the Supreme Court uh, uh, made gay marriage legal in all fifty states. Right? Way back in 2015. Now, uh, part of the, the whole new bill thing, remember this is, we're talking about a, a state law, and, and I, you know, of course this is probably just designed to take it back to the Supreme Court. Um, state law saying that the Supreme Court overstepped their bounds when they did that. And there there are many people who agree that it, that it should be state law. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of libertarians that are like, it shouldn't be, you know, the government shouldn't be involved at all. I, I, I tend to agree. I tend to think that uh, marriage is a religious ceremony and the government should stay out of it. It's a religious, you know, uniting, personally. That's just my personal feeling. The government should should stay out of it and let, let, let God um, handle that situation. That's, that's just my opinion. So, that's, um, but in light of the fact that, you know, Gorsuch just got appointed and um, in light of the fact that we possibly will have a couple more Supreme Court appointments, if this does indeed end up going back to the Supreme Court, which I, I, I am sure it will, um, it's going to be pretty interesting to, to see what happens, to say, to say the least. So I, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, that I I found that shocking. I'm just surprised I didn't I, I didn't hear more about that. But the most important thing that is happening today is that today is Good Friday. Why is it the most important thing? Well, it's the most important thing is because Christians all over the world um, are are celebrating, and I use the word celebrating is kind of a, a strange word to use when you're commemorating. Um, the day that Jesus died upon the cross, but it's just such um, an important day 
for Christians to know that Jesus willingly gave his life for us. And so um, I, I just want to um, wish Christians all over the world um, a very blessed Good Friday and just hoping that they take more than a few moments to uh, remember that because it's, it's important. So that being said, uh, when we come back on the other side of the break, we will have Ms. Amory, excuse me, Ms. Amory Mural. She's one of the politichicks. And uh, we will have a nice chat with her about the political climate of today. It should be an interesting conversation. We will be back with you on the other side of the break. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. Hello, this is Leslie Ann Stoffel with The Real Clear Israel. Join me every Sunday morning at 10.05 Eastern Time on the Exceptional Conservative Network where we'll be discussing Israel with guests from Israel and around the world. That's The Real Clear Israel, 10.05 Sunday on the Exceptional Conservative Hi, Network. Hi there. We're on a, Good morning. We're on a commercial break. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, we'll that's back not back. how it goes. I think I'm Shannon, and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Your last name. Join us from Mural. 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Mural. Time. Mural. Live on SHR Media. Mural. And Mural. on Mural. Thank you. CN, Where we'll be talking about all you kinds of things. From sports and politics. The food and entertainment. A lot of stuff. To money, family, commercial. and anything else in between. Community, yeah. Holidays. Commercial. Okay. It'll be great. Okay. Join us oh. from 7 to 9 a.m. <laughs> Eastern Time. Human by race, Christian by faith, American by nationality, conservative by choice. It's Reverend Ralph Chittams, the right guy, on the Exceptional Conservative Network from 4.05 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. The right guy on TECN. From the warfront to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Jersey Joe, Hook Griever, Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Okay, we are back. You are listening to Money Talk with Melanie. This is your business diva, Melanie Collette, and we are pleased to have with us this morning Ms. Anne-Marie Morell. She is the owner and CEO and editor-in-chief of Politichicks.com. How are you this morning? I'm good, and I'm so happy to be on with you. I listened to your interview with Morgan, and it was so much fun. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad. I'm so glad. She, I, she was she was a hoot. She was fantastic. Loved having her oh, on yeah. the show. Yeah, she's fan, she's great. And as, as you as I'm sure you heard, my cousin James is a huge fan. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Everywhere we go together, someone will say something about Dallas to her. I mean, it's been a long time since she's been on that show, but people still recognize her immediately, or they recognize her from her eyes. I mean, she's just stunning. Horrible to stand next to her. She, I hate it. She, she's uh, right, right. <laughs> Isn't it terrible to stand next to pretty girls? Which you have a lot of nerve, anyway. When I, <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm very good at, at still photos that I can doctor up. It, it's real life that makes people say you're not in 
Marie Morale. You don't look like that person on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> so it's very sad. You're not, suppo you're not supposed to say, what's wrong with people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I did your, your promo picture, I was like, you know, it, you know, we're, we're girls. So yes. we're just always doing that thing. And I, I pull your picture up and I'm like, really? <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you a story, Melanie, and this is the truth. In, in our first book cover, two different times, I met people that, that came to, to meet us, and I'm standing right in front of them, and they looked at, they looked at Morgan. This happened to me twice, and Morgan can, can testify to this. And, and they pointed to my picture and said, when is, when is Anne Marie going to be here? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, see, I am not lying. I, I'm I'm an older lady. I can do the best I can do. Today, I'm actually going to be on television, on high definition television. I hate it. I I would be happy to never be on television again as long as I live. Oh my but goodness I, gracious! My cause is bigger than my ego. So. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, you're gorgeous. I'm sorry, you just are. But yeah, yeah. Well, Morgan Brittany is gorgeous as well. My goodness gracious, she's just yeah. beautiful. She really is. But yeah. <laughs> but but more important than that, you all are both women of substance, and um, yes. Yeah. Your, your website, politichicks.com, and your book, just absolutely fantastic. And for our audience um, who may or may not be aware, I just want to remind you you all, and I, I told my audience in the, in the open, I reminded them, as I did last week, that um, you are the second in a three-part series that we're doing here on Money Talk with Melanie that we had Morgan last week, and we're going to have Sonia uh, Sasser next week. But um, that the, the Politichicks... Um, has uh, that Amory created Politichicks as a web series, and that uh, yourself and Morgan Brittany have a website called Politichicks.com. You guys should definitely go check it out. They have hundreds of thousands of followers on social media, and that uh, Amory is the founder. Morgan Brittany, and along with Morgan Brittany and Sonia Sasser, they all write on the website. But in addition to that, they are co-authors of the best-selling book, What Women Want, and also the book um, Politichicks, A Clarion Call to Political Activism, which is just a, a, a fantastic book. Love it. Um, and, and I wanted to ask you the same question that I, one of the same questions that I asked Morgan, what, what was your impetus um, on writing the book? What was your motivation? Well... It's the whole, the entire foundation of our country was based on activism. I mean, we're a country that from the very start has been working hard to right wrongs, to correct mistakes, to rise above adversity, to, to fight enslavement of all types. So, I mean, this book could have been titled A Clarion Call to Education Activism or Global Islamization Activism or Religious Activism because without activism, there wouldn't be a United States of America. So this, this book, there are four doctors, one lawyer, an Olympic athlete. Uh, I think we have two veterans, three school teachers, uh, millennials, one eight-year-old woman. Have con all, all these people have contributed to this book, and they are all activists in their own communities. And, and the days of just voting are over. The saying, well, I voted. I did my job is, is, is over. That, that did not work so well. Our country, and that's why we're where we are right now. Where, where people don't trust the government, they don't trust the media because we turned the fox, we turned the hen house over to the fox. That's that's what happened. Certainly so did. That's, that's what the book is about. Certainly did. Certainly did. And that and that, that was every reason to uh to, to write that book for sure. I mean, if anything, yeah. <laughs> that uh, the presidential race with Ob o Obama, Barack Obama. Uh, winning not once but twice I mean the second time was the first time I wasn't all that shocked just because you know right. first black president etc cetera, etc cetera. the second time that one shocked me I'm not gonna lie yeah <laughs> I just yeah. was like are you kidding <laughs> yeah uh, I, I, I felt the same it was like I, am, I, I got 
why Barack Obama was, I, I got that too the first time. My son voted for him the first time. It was exciting. And I was hopeful that he was going to be able to bring our country together and heal some of the, the hurts and the scars from our past. But he did the opposite. And every time he would do something, I, I, kept, I remember thinking every step along the way, I'm like, surely he's not trying to divide us. This makes no sense. But it seemed like that's what he was trying to do. And, and along with Eric Holder and the DOJ, they, they really did draw a line between us and them. And I, people had to stand up. We had to stand up and speak out for ourselves. I it, think it was, it was a difficult eight years. <laughs> I think it's something about being a brown conservative that makes you recognize immediately that that's not going to happen, which is why it was so, because it's so difficult. It's just so much yeah. more difficult. So, a lot, but there were some of us that some of us that, that voted for Barack Obama. I, di I didn't, but I know some <laughs> that were like, you know, we need to have a black president. Like Colin Powell, like come on! I, I was so disappointed in him. <laughs> I was like, "Come on, dude, what are you doing?" But, 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 but I think there were many of us. You know, it's it's so difficult to be a black Republican that you just immediately recognize that divisive, that divisiveness in someone, and you see what they're doing because, like I said, in order to be a black Republican, you have to. You gotta know. You gotta know your stuff. You can't just. <laughs> yeah. You can't just be one. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you can be a black Democrat. Just saying. <laughs> oh, like I, I can't. I can only imagine. I mean, I have to know a certain amount of stuff. But yeah, you're you're gonna have you have to explain in detail why you believe the way you do, and and that's not an, that's not as easy as it would sound because you're you're standing on on a principle and you're standing on a truth that they can't see because they're, they're, they're so many are blinded to, to the truth, to what they, because they believe what they've been told for sometimes for generations. I, I was a Democrat, Melanie, by the way, until nine 11, I, I voted for my first election. I campaigned for Jimmy Carter in college. I voted for Bill Clinton twice. Um, I, my husband was always a very strong Republican. You can only imagine the fights we got into oh, during the Clinton man. years. Because he, I'm a Christian, and he was like, how can you stand up for this man who, who's so sleazy and, <laughs> and just crazy? And, and I, I always had an excuse, but it was because I was blinded. I, have a, I had a veil over, over my eyes. And, and once that veil is lifted, it's almost evangelical, where you just want to spread the truth. You want to want to help other people. No, you need to understand what this actually means. Exactly. <laughs> you need to read the history of this. Exactly. And, and I did. I became a voracious reader. I went back and read American history books and biographies about every president. I mean, it really does shake you to your core when you when you see that light. When you have that aha aha moment, right? And, yes. And, and in Politichix, yes. you you write um, a chapter or an essay called "Don't Drink the Kool Aid: A Study of American Socialism," and I feel like that yeah. that's right there in there um, with what you and I are talking about. Can you uh, explain to the audience a little bit about what that essay was about? Oh yeah. It well, the, 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 it's all about Jim Jones, and, and he was the one in Guyana that, that, that was able to trick all these people into drinking cyanide-laced Kool-Aid, mm -hmm. but he started out as a strong social justice warrior in Los Angeles. He was friends with, with good old Jerry Brown, and he was all over, he ran a church, although he was an atheist, but he understood that the best way to gather people big groups was to, to do it under the guise of religion. And he was able to dupe so many people into believing that he was was a freer of, of enslavement when he was actually a slave master. And he brought all these people to that island and he killed all of them. And that that's so, we, that we see that all the time when we have leaders like that, when we have any kind of leader who leads you towards something under the guise of, I'm going to protect you, big daddy government, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to take care of you. We can't allow ourselves to be duped by that on any level. 
from any president, Republican or Democrat. So that's another reason that all of us have got to remain very vigilant, watching whoever we put in office. Um, if, if Hillary Clinton would have won, I would be fighting. If, I'm going to fight just as strongly with President Trump if I see him going down wrong path. Right? We can't be silent ever again. The silent majority almost killed the Republican Party. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. It reminds me of, there was a post I saw on Facebook this morning. I don't know if that person is listening or not, but I, I, I will address them later. But so, <laughs> someone uh -oh. uh, posted on, well, someone posted on Facebook, um, if you, it, are you a 100% Trumper or not, if you are not, then unfriend me now. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> who is 100% anyone? Like, really, and if you are a 100% Trumper, even if you voted for him, then you've got a bigger problem. And I think it's what you're talking about here with drinking the Kool-Aid. And now you're drinking the Kool-Aid. Right. And, and it's like you said, you're not being vigilant. You you know what I mean? About, about keeping an eye on him and making sure that he is sticking to, you know, our values, like he's supposed to. That he's, right. he's holding up the platform. Like he's supposed well, to. The, the difference, the greatest difference between Donald Trump and, uh, and Barack Obama is Donald Trump really is listening to people. He really does care about about what his base wants and believes. And and I'm hoping and I pray. I, I heard you say that earlier that you're on your knees and I'm on I'm on my knees, hoping and praying that the people advising him and guiding him are going to be on, are going to stay on the right track. They're going to stay in touch with the, the pulse of Americans instead of just the beltway and the lobbyists. But it's like what usually happens when someone becomes a politician, they just get lost in that fog of, of power that you get in DC. Um, I, I am hoping and praying that he's going to be different. But he's still, now that he's president, he is officially a politician. Right. <laughs> and anyone with that title, we have got to watch carefully. But we're crazy if we don't. Absolutely. And, and you know, listen, and anyone who knows me and follow me on social media knows I, I, I am not exactly a huge Donald Trump fan. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and mainly just because of, of his rhetoric during the campaign season, and I just thought it made, you know, for those of us, um, especially those of us who are brown and who have been card-carrying Republicans for, for years, um, it, it, his rhetoric just made it very difficult for us. And I, I just don't think that he realized, like, it was already difficult, and his rhetoric made it ten times more difficult. I mean, ma many yeah. of us, if you go to our social media, you will see lo like legitimately lost friends and family and things like that over this election uh, yeah. be because of his, specifically because of his rhetoric. I mean, we've been Republicans for years and never really had, had issues, but never really had the issues like we had with his, with his specific, um, his specific uh, um, campaign. And his right. rhetoric. And so, you know, that, that, that's why I wasn't a huge fan. But since he's been in, he seems to, one of the things I do like is that he's not beholden to anyone. He doesn't have to worry about his political future, per se. Right. You know, he can flip-flop. So what? You know, what's he got to, what's he got to worry about? Re-election? So, do you think he worries legitimately about whether or not he's going to get re-elected? It's it's not his. I don't at all. Yeah, I you know, agree. You, you know what I mean? It's not his life. It's not like his. He's got to rely on that lifetime, you know, salary or that lifetime health care or or any of that because he already has it. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I, one like I, I'm sure you saw this today, Melody, that um, he he signed a bill allowing states to defund Planned Parenthood. That's something that would never have happened in the last eight years or if, if Hillary Clinton had been elected president. So things like that, he really is on the right track and he got us the right Supreme Court justice. Yes. He's, I, I believe, I, I have to believe he is on the right track. I'm not crazy about 
bombing <laughs> in succession, Syria and then Afghanistan, I, that concerns me a little bit. But again, I have to I'm, I, I have to live by faith and and hope and pray and trust that his advisors are giving him the right advice that he's doing what he what he should. I, I don't know. There's no way we can know until. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I hope we. I hope. I hope it's all correct. Well, you know what? Uh, on this good, right. on this Good Friday, um, you know, especially with both of us being Christians, I, I do have it on good authority, and I don't know if you've heard this too. That you know, he, in addition to consulting with, you know, his political advisors, he consults with a number of clergy as well, and, and, and that <laughs> is heartening. So, and encouraging, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something, we know something had to be done about ISIS. We can't just keep hoping ISIS is going to go away and disappear. Uh, he's sending some very, very, very strong messages that there's a new sheriff in town, basically, and he's not going to put up with what the, the past president put up with. But it, but again, I, I so agree with what you're, what you said about how he made it difficult for, not just for you guys, but for everyone right. to defend this president. I, right. I've been having to defend things with my family that, that are like, how can you believe him? He's a liar, because that's what the media tells you. You hear it over and over. Donald right. Trump is a liar. Right. Everything he says is a lie. He's crazy. He's maniacal. Um, so it, it makes it really difficult to defend him. But I, all I can figure is anything we, we had to all know, anything this and he's an extreme president. Oh, this yes. One of the most extreme presidents maybe in the history of America. Certainly. But, he, but he's a businessman. It came out of nowhere with no political experience. And now he's ruling this country. So yep. there had to be some major shakeups. And, and that kind of change is never easy. Never easy. And it's, and it's hard to defend. And he's going to absolutely have to prove people wrong. If, if they think he's crazy, you've got to prove them wrong. True. And that's up to him. That's up to him. That's on his shoulders. And he knew it going in. And I'll tell you another thing. I don't know if it did this for you, having to defend having to defend him or defend his, his candidacy. But for me, it also sharpened my beliefs and my values. Made, made me recommit, if you will. And, and think yeah. about what it was that I really stood for. Was it about the candidate or was it about my principles? I had to really decide. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I completely agree. I, I was actually, I don't know if you know, I was i was a national co-chair for Women for Cruise with, with the First Lady of Texas, uh, Governor um, Cecile Abbott, and Jenny Beth Martin from Tea Party Patriots. And I was going on television like every other day promoting Ted Cruz. So, and then I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I had to go to the hospital for a while, and then I was completely out of the whole entire world for a while. When I came back, Cruz was out, and Donald uh, Trump was pretty much the shoe-in for the, for the presidential candidate. So, it was difficult for me to come back from all of that, from one day I was promoting Ted Cruz to the next day. I wake up from a coma, <laughs> and I have to promote the guy that was completely denigrating him and, oh, and attacking him every day. Gosh. It was difficult for me. It really was difficult. But once I got on board, and once I started really examining, and, and you're right, I had to go beyond my own personal feelings about it, and I had to really try to look with an open mind and an open heart at what he could be capable of doing. Right. And and that was far, far, far outweigh, outweighed anything that someone like a Hillary Clinton could have ever done. Exactly. And and frankly, I've been I've been really happy so far with, with what he's done, with what he's really trying to accomplish. And and I can see the the maneuvering in Washington. He's learning, he's finding his footing, he's finding yep. out who he can and can't trust. He's Learning the ropes, but while he's learning these ropes, he's also he's also keeping the shop open. <laughs> he is a businessman, and he is he is working. He's uh, working hard to prove people wrong, and that's that's the good thing about his ego. 
He's exactly. Des- he's going to be desperate to prove people wrong. He wants them to see he's a great man. Exactly. I, I agree with you about his, <laughs> about his ego. He is not going to allow himself to fail. And I, I've, I've said that for months. So his ego won't, yeah. won't, won't allow it. I'm really so, I, right. I, we're up against a break, but before we go to the break, I, I want, I, I don't want to let this slip by. I'm really sorry to hear about your diagnosis. I'm prayerful that you're doing well and will continue to do well. well. Um, we're, um, I didn't want to just gloss over that and make you think that I didn't hear that because I certainly, certainly did. Um, and I hope, I hope you're doing well. Um, thank you. Uh, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. This is your business diva, Melanie Collette. I'm on with Anne-Marie Morell. We are talking politics, money, Donald Trump, and all sorts of awesome things. We will be back on the other side of the break. I'm Ken McClinton, chairman of the Exceptional Conservative Network. Never has the cry for economic liberty been more resounding in urban America than on Election Day 2016. It's the economy! All real change begins with the American entrepreneur. Socialism did not work. Progressivism stole the wealth of individuals and families. You voted for something different. Real change. But what does real change look and sound like? It looks like Las Vegas, and it sounds like Freedom Fest 10. Freedom Fest, the world's largest gathering of free minds, is a popular liberty-minded conference at the beautiful Paris Resort in Las Vegas from July 19th to the 22nd. Hear the voices of the urban freedom movement. Deneen Borelli, Larry Elder, Gina Lofton, Helen Rowley, Juan Pablo Agrande and Zayad Abdelnuar. Share ideas with powerful liberty movement figures like Steve Forbes, Jim Rogers, Anthony Scaramucci, Jennifer Grossman, Naomi Brockwell, Denise D'Souza, John Stossel, Lisa Kennedy, Peter Schiff, and our keynote speaker this year, William Shatner. Your money, your liberty, your freedom, your city. Come for the real and return with the change. Register now at FreedomFest.com for $100 off the regular registration rate when you use the all caps code T-E-C-N. We'll see you there. Come on, Mr. Nunez. Say it ain't so. Hello, I'm... Ron Edwards, on today's page from the Edwards Notebook, Representative Devin Nunez, please step out of the politically correct parallel universe you've gotten stuck in. Your Wimpus Americanos apologeticus decision to temporarily step aside as head of the Russian probe pending the outcome of an outlandish progressive-oriented ethics investigation? Sir, I know you said, quote, is in the best interest of the House Intelligence Committee and the Congress, unquote. But that makes about as much sense as saying that the Chucky Schumers of the world, Nasty Pelosi and even Governor Snyder of Michigan, have good intentions regarding America because those progressive globalists do not. Mr. Nunez, your clear and precise investigation had the crooked progressive Democrats shaking in their crappy boots. Oh, I understand that several left-wing activist groups have filed accusations against you with the Office of Congressional Ethics. It was done to prevent the American people from getting the whole truth about improper unmasking of the identities of U.S. citizens and other abuses of power. Such typical Republican style of rolling over and caving into the whims of deviant progressives is both stupid and dangerous for the Republic. I'm Ron Edwards. Sponsored by the Tri-County Liberty Coalition. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk Bobcat Saloon. Coming soon to Ossicles near you. 
Excelsior. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. You are listening to the Exceptional Conservative Network. For more information, go to www.theexceptionalconservative.com. Okay, we are back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. This is your business diva, Melanie Collette, and we are on with Anne-Marie Murrell. I don't know why I'm having such a difficult time with her last name, because it's not that hard. Oh. <laughs> I just, it's just me. I, it's just my issue that I'm, that I'm having. It's such a pleasure it's, to have you on today. Um, she's one of the... It's so good to talk to you. It's good to talk to you, too. She's what, she is the, found, the founder, editor-in-chief of Politichicks.com, also a co-author of the book uh, Politichicks, A Clarion Call to Activism. And we were just discussing um, just one of the many things that are going on um, in the world today, in the world of politics. Uh, we're talking about drinking the Kool-Aid. Another thing that I wanted to ask you about from the book, um, there were two other sections that you wrote in, uh, one um, parenting and the other one activism. I wanted to ask you about uh, act, actually activism first because I want to make sure we get to it. Um, <laughs> and it's how the how the media exploited fear in the 2016 presidential election, especially since we kind of touched on that on the other side um, of the break, um, just talking about the rhetoric from the presidential election and how it affected each of us. Um, so what what went on in that chapter, and and how do you think we can we can stave it off in the future? Uh, let me tell you, that Morgan and I were in New York. We were doing, um, we covered the election for three nights for, 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 it's called the 60 Minutes of the Netherlands. It, it's the biggest television program, news program in the Netherlands. And so we were doing election coverage for them in New York. The first night before the election, they, they have, it was a studio audience. Seth, Seth Myers was one of the guests because he used to live in Norway, apparently. Uh, it, it was amazing. They were, they hated Donald Trump. And so Morgan and I were in enemy territory. Wow. They were smug. They were, they were condescending. The, the host actually said to Morgan, do you really want a president that's going to grab your pee? <gasps> and he said the word. Yeah. Shut the yeah. front door. Morgan, oh, Morgan was, perfect she just kind of laughed she threw her head back and she goes of course not i lived in hollywood i've been i've been i've seen and heard much worse than anything donald trump said in that off-camera interview right to my face she was brilliant but that's the way it was so the night so election night they were still very confident we were on same thing audience was all hyped up and 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 the host said so when Hillary Clinton wins, are all of you angry Trump supporters going to go out in the street and protest? Huh. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's the way, that's the way it was. But then the day after, I was on, Morgan had to fly back home. I was on the day after by myself. There was no studio audience. It was morose. It was like there had been a death. At the, the makeup artist, the whole time she was putting on my makeup, she was crying. <laughs> the hairdresser <laughs> They, they were in shock. They, they were blind. They had no idea what hit them. And one of the girls that was on the panel with me, she was an African American woman. And she was like, she said, my, my three year old daughter woke me up in the middle of the night, and she said, "Mommy, are they going to send all of my friends back across the wall? And they're not going to let us." It was ridiculous, Melanie. It was, it was that gave me such. An insight into what we were up against. But you know what? That's, that's their it was fault. Amazing. That's, yeah. That is absolutely <laughs> their fault. And listen, I, I'm I'm really not usually one to enjoy others' pain. 
but <laughs> I, I'm not. But. I'm really not. I, I am a. I'm a sensitive yeah. soul. I'm empathetic. Mm -hmm. But I'm. Sometimes you deserve it. I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they, they were so confident. Uh, Just the yeah. level of hubris. Seriously. Yeah. Come on. Yes. So, and the fear. Well, well I will tell you, after the show, that I do want to tell you, that after the taping, I, I went up to this young mom, and I, and I had her, and I said, please, no. No one's going to, no one's out to get you and your daughter. Exactly. No one's going to steal all of her friends and take them in the dark, you know, the, the, at midnight and, and shove them across some giant wall. No one's going to do that. And she, she told me to my face. She pushed me back, and she said, I know that there are rednecks and KKK forming out in the in the country right now as we speak. And I'm like, I'm from the country. There's no, no. And I wanted to say, that of course, the KKK was founded by Democrats. So you maybe you should, maybe you're on the wrong side anyway. Uh -huh. But I didn't go into that with her. Exactly. But yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, she's not going to listen to that from you anyway. <laughs> she's not going to hear that from you anyway. She's barely going to hear it from no, me. No, no. So... But and it, yeah. but the fear was palpable. I, I I am a I quit being a public school teacher uh, earlier this year, um, <laughs> and, and this this mm -hmm. was one of the reasons. But the day after yeah. the election, counselors were walking around because they had to console our LGBTQ students because they just knew that you know gay marriage was going to go away and that their, their persecution was going to be increased etc cetera, etc cetera. and I was talking to her about this and she said you know we have to validate their feelings and I said to her and this is you know one of the reasons why I'm no longer a public school teacher because I don't know how to keep my mouth closed and uh, <laughs> But I said to her, I said, why do we have to validate feelings that are unrealistic and not true? Period. I said, that's not what Good he said. I said, that's not, I said, that's not what Donald Trump said during, during, mm -hmm. uh, election season at, at all. I said, so why would you, I said, why would we validate in students what is absolutely not true? Why would we validate those feelings when it's completely unrealistic? And she just looked at right. me as if I was crazy. But, it, but it's that fear mongering. Absolute fear mongering. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, their, their fears are being validated, though, by the press, by the media, every single day. You can see the headlines in any, any newspaper, any, any magazine, any, any TV show. Everything is leading toward this is a man that you need to fear. This is a scary, scary, bad man. That's what they're, they're validating their fears. They're, they're inflaming their fears. They're throwing gasoline on their fears every single day. Exactly. They're hoping something bad will happen to Donald Trump. And I, and I hate to say that, but I don't, you know, you look at all the, the Republican presidents over the years who have run into bad stuff with Democrats. <laughs> it's not good. But so you, I, I pray for Donald Trump every day. Absolutely. But you have to wonder that if this is the kind of thing that's going on in our schools. I mean, this was a guidance counselor who said this to me and who said, yeah. you know, and she's like, I've been dealing with students all day who've just been in my office crying about the election. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> and I'm like, and why are you validating that buffoonery? because <laughs> you know it's like it's completely not stop that stop doing that that's ridiculous you're being you, you are all being ridiculous and, and dramatic yeah. stop like really yeah. and, and you know and, and it's the media and it's and it's you know liberalism highly emotional and actually that that goes into um the chapter that you had it was regarding parenting but i think it's it, it spreads you know, across liberalism in general, um, you had an, an essay called America, Land of the Feeling, Home of the Highly Emotional. I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> I saw, when I saw Good. that. Good. that was my intent. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, oh my gosh, so true. Can you tell the honestly a little bit about, about that, uh, about that essay? Oh yeah, I, I I'm a sixth generation Texan and I grew up out in the piney woods of East Texas. I grew up running on barefoot on iron ore red rocks and stickers and I grew up spending all my hours going walking way out into the woods early early morning until almost dark uh 
So, I mean, I, I grew up, Texas tough. I grew up with no air conditioning in hot schools in Texas, and we weren't coddled. We weren't given, you know, oh, you need to go home because you're going to die from heat exhaustion. No, we, we toughed it out. We stayed. We, we worked hard. Every boy I knew grew up uh, working at the steel factory or the iron ore plant. I mean, and, and, and what I see now with these people that are just little buttercups and they're so fragile <laughs> and they're, they're afraid of their shadows and parents are afraid to confront their own children and they and they don't know what time out is. Yes. Time out, I would have played for time out. I would have loved time out. Right. Time out would have been the best thing in my life instead of having a little squat on my butt, which I, and I remember every spanking I ever got, I deserved every spanking I ever got. So, so yeah, that, that, that particular story for me is, is, is absolutely true. It's, it's, it's just, where have we, how, we've got to get back to strong parenting. We've got to get back to strong men and strong women. Absolutely. Women who aren't afraid to be women and men who aren't afraid to be men. Open the daggum door for me. I, yeah, I'm strong enough to open the door for myself, but, but mm. no, I, I want a man to open the door Thank for me you. without apologizing. Exactly. I want a man to say, you look nice today without saying, oh, please don't sue me. I'm not trying to just right. sue you. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show today before we go please tell the audience where we can get the book politics and and what women really want and how they can contact you if they need to okay thank and thank you so much for having me on melody you're you're a pleasure we we all love you oh, um, thank so you that's so much. dot com. you can get our book politics a clarion call to political activism on amazon and on at bonds and noble we're going to be all over the u.s we're, we're launching our book book um from capitol hill we're going to be in D.C., then we're going to go to New York. We're going to be on TV all over the place. And North Carolina, South Carolina, back to D.C. We're going to be everywhere. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> So I hope to see you somewhere. Oh, I hope to see you somewhere, too. That is actually very <laughs> possible. That might happen. Thank you so much That's for good. being on the show today. I look forward to talking to you again really soon. Of course. Thanks, Melanie. All right. Bye -bye. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Call ended. Shekinah Ranch is involved in helping youth through the snags along the pathway to adulthood. The last eight years have created greater challenges. Having a president to parade perversion to our youth has generated the need for us to ramp up our character learning 100-fold. Today's youth are confused, and our goal is to give them a fresh understanding of creation, moral clarity, respect for authority, in short, restore absolutes and boundaries. Boys are born boys and girls are born girls, God's design. Right is right even when no one else is doing it. The Exceptional Conservative Network is underway to raise $10,000 to help advance this mission. Together, let's reverse the confusion aimed at our youth. Don't be a spectator. Go to our donation portal and make your financial contribution now. Your gift goes toward helping youth get clarity. Moral clarity. Thank you. Help us raise $10,000 to care for over 300 abused children at Shekana Ranch this summer and put an end to the grief and unnecessary loss of life of unresolved homicides, missing persons, and sex trafficking by going to the Exceptional Conservative Network homepage at theexceptionalconservativeshow.com and donate today. I want to thank Anne-Marie Morell for being on Money Talk with Melanie today. I want to thank everyone in the chat. I want to thank everyone for listening. And I truly do want to thank all the Christians everywhere um, for, for listening, for taking the time out to listen to the show. And I want to wish them all a very blessed Good Friday and a happy Easter. And I'm hoping that you take more than, more than one moment, please, to reflect on Jesus' sacrifice. Have a great day. Remember, this is important because it's your money.